Hello and welcome, it's Michael Culling again, and here we are again with our Java programming series. Uh, we left off with um, introducing enums in the last episode, and I promised that I would continue uh, and show you a little bit more you can do with enums. So let's jump straight in and look what that is. So here we are back at our um, contagion scenario with the enumerations. Remember we had this enumeration type. Um, one other clear improvement we can do now is um, to do with what's called responsibility-driven design. Responsibility-driven design says that we should arrange the storage of our data so that always the data that belongs together is together in the same class. So, um, for example, you should say um, which class is responsible for um, you know, holding a bit of data and that class is then where it should be stored. And one example we have here now is we have our enumeration type with our three different values. Um, so we have these three possible states, susceptible, infected or immune. Um, and visually these states are represented by three different images. We have the blue image, the green image and the orange image. Um, and they are very closely associated with these three states. We can see that in our file system, if I open our project, here's our, yeah, our image files, there are the three image names. Uh, the file names for those three images are normal.png, infected and immune.png, um, and these are associated with the three states, but they are not currently associated in my source code. So if I look at the source code here, are the definition of my states of um, infection that a person can have and the names of the associated images are scattered all over the code here. So um, they are set in fact in the person class. So here it changes the file name to the other one. Here it changes the file name. So the knowledge of which image is associated with which state is actually stored implicitly in line here in the person class even though it is information about the status. So responsibility-driven design tells us that if I have information visually depicted about each state, then the image depicting them should be um, stored inside the class that represents the state because that belongs together. So let's see how we do that. What we do now is we just associate the image with the three different states that we have here. Um, in the important thing to know about this is that an enumeration class, an enum, is just a class in Java like others. Um, what is different is just how objects are constructed because these three constants are essentially object constructions, but this class can still have other fields and methods just as normal classes. So if I want to continue writing here, I need a semicolon. I can write a field here. I can write private string image so that I can store the image that is associated with each state. And then if I want to initialize the image, I need a constructor that can um, do this. And I make the constructor private because the constructor in an enumeration will be called only by creating these objects. So this essentially is the constructor call and because it's in the same class the constructor can be private. But the constructor now needs to take the image name as a parameter and if it does we can just assign the image name as part of the constructor. So now our infection status is ready to receive the image name here um, in this constructor. We will see that as soon as we've done this we are getting now errors here where our constants are defined because um, this essentially constructs an object. The constructor now expects an, a string so we now need to do this with passing a string in. So here we can now say normal PNG which is the name of the image that is associated with the state. So here we are adding a parameter now to the constructor. So we have infected.png and we have here immune.png. Um, and so now we are creating these three, um, these three state objects, enumeration objects, 
with a constructor parameter that stores it. And once we have done this, we can also, of course, now create an accessor method to make this image available. So we say public string get image, um, which returns to us the image name. Um, and that way we make the image available. So um, there's an error here. Let's see, now it compiles. Um, so this is my extended enumeration class now that stores the image together with the enumeration value. And if we go here now, um, instead of um, hard coding here, um, which image should be set. So when I changed the infection status to infected here, um, I had to know exactly the name of the image. What I can do now is I, first of all, I wanna move that line down. I take the hard-coded image name away and I just say status.getImage. So this one changes the status, then I get the image for the status, whatever the status is, and I set it. Um, and if I now go here where my status changes again, I can re replace that line where the image changed with the same line where I just say set image um, status get image. So every time I'm changing the status now, I'm just changing the image accordingly. Um, so here now, the person class does not have hard-coded what the image names are. It doesn't even know how many image names there are. So it, for example, if I wanted to add a fourth sta possible state for my person here, um, it is now guaranteed that every time I introduce a new state, I immediately associate an appropriate image with it. And here in the person class, I don't need to know what the image is. I can just ask the status to give me its image and I can display this. I can improve this, in fact, even a little bit further because here, um, if I change the state now, I should always also adjust the image. And if I have that as two lines of code, there is no guarantee that this always happens together. For example, here, when I change the state again, um, I have again the image change and I could forget to do this. So I can make that a method. I can say private void change status or let's call it set status. Um, set status is a proper set method which says takes in infection status new status and what it does is it just says status is assigned new status um, and then it takes this line to set the image. I take that away and copy it here. And by doing this now, it is always guaranteed that this happens together. So instead of doing this here, I can delete this line and I can just say set status to this one. Oh. I meant to have a closing bracket here. So, and up there where I change it, I do the same. I say set status to this, and I don't need to set the image explicitly anymore. I just say set status to this status, or set status to this one, and my method here takes care of doing it properly, including the status update and the image change. And this is, again, a nicer solution um, because it keeps all data that belongs together together, so the state itself with its image, and here makes the person class independent of the actual image names. That is it for today. See you next time.